Hello there, everyone, and welcome back to Hearts of Iron Fortia. I know the last is of Europe. I'm your host, Mr. Philip Hartlover. But as you can see on screen, we've got a lot to read, but we'll begin with the first victory. Uh huh, yes, wonderful. Thank you, Ambassador. Kissinger set the phone down on the table with the out of the way hotel room he's booked in DC to take calls from. Tokyo had gone for it. The U.S. is fishing rights would extend far out into the Pacific. Sure, the U.S. would have to unofficially recognize Japanese rule over Hawaii in exchange, but that wouldn't be any of the, on any of the papers. Kissinger permitted himself a little grim. Certainly a good start at detente. It would go a long way to counter and claim to surrender, but he can't celebrate too much. It was a victory for America, but the Japanese will see us as a defeat. If he doesn't want them to back out of the coming negotiations or maritime transit, he knew he'd have to grant them some concessions soon. So it's a victory for America, and now Kissinger had to make it a victory for Japan too, give and take, but the new face of the administration, Philip Park. Always consider himself a good sport, and Georgetown endured a fair share of teasing about his Midwestern nasal. And the Senate too, he endured snide comments about his folksy demeanor, all of that, however, paled to the kind of abuse he now regularly received in the press. A hairy situation in Washington read one headline in the style section of the New York Times that bought a picture of the president's unshaven face. He turned the page of his daily press clippings, only to see a cartoon version of himself on the cover of Time. A cartoon heart leered through a scraggly, unkempt beard surrounded by hippies flashing peace signs. Philip Park closed the door in disgust and pushed it across the dinner table. Everything all right, Phil, said Janie. Eyebrows raised, the first couple sat together, breakfast plates in front of them. It's fine, it's... Uh, he, glowering, he glowered at the folder, half hoping it might somehow catch fire. This beard, though, I might change things up by not shaving for a few weeks. Heck, I don't know. Diana Vreeland, a Vogue, described it as very dashing, and besides, you've never been one to take fashion tips from the kind of stuck-up fossils they employ at newspapers nowadays. Philip scratched his beard. Janie was still right, but he couldn't get the headlines out of his head. Do you like it? Janie looked up from her play and stared at her husband for a long moment, inspecting him. Then she flashed her radiant smile. I'll have you to agree with Miss Vreeland on this one, Phil. It does really suit you. It makes you look distinguished. Janie always knew how to cheer up a man. I don't know. I think that's okay. You know, it's okay. I don't like how much how white this is compared to his brownness up here, but like even then, it's like... He's like a pre-Santa Claus, but the old man in the icy. Director of Central Intelligence John Sherman Cooper was not a man who enjoyed visits to the White House. The trap between Langley and the White House was always a nightmare, and the press, of course, somehow got worse each visit. Still, he was a professional. Sitting across from the President and his National Security Advisor in the Oval Office, Cooper laid out two mission briefs. Dr. Kissinger requested the agency to provide the administration with new options to counteract German malfeasance internationally. He said in a droll tone, based on our assessment of the current threat environment and the operating budget, our staff has developed two possible options for you, Operation Nighthawk and Operation Falconer. Kissinger smiles as they were discussing some baseball scores. You people in your code names tell us about their operations. Now, Operation Nighthawk. This is an ambitious operation thrown together by our brightest agents to exploit vulnerabilities in the German security apparatus using some incriminating information about a senior attaché. The United States would contain uh, a well-placed informant on the German military activities. The mission carries with it some risks, but the results could be invaluable. And the other, the one with the poet? Oh yes, the Falconer is a little more constrained. It's really more the kind of thing the state will cook up. Cooper frowned. Simple put. I commit the U.S. is setting up a propaganda radio outlet to influence European opinion. Considerably less risky, but in the view of his office, of long-term, limited long-term value if you want to take the fight to the Nazis. Kissinger looked at heart. You'll call Mr. President. Faulkner or Nighthawk? I prefer Nighthawk. That sounds more fun. But we're currently doing the game of life. Now, this last time we're going to do the game, please go right ahead just to make sure that we can keep doing the self-right stuff. But I really want to focus on those roads. And we want to get at least one thing maybe done and accomplished, perhaps, um, before the elections happen. So we're going to probably, if we possibly can, beeline through all of these focuses first. Just so before the elections happen that we say we are successful, of course. Um, of course, we need to do the doctrine too, but we're still doing okay with the use plus. We are maxing out expenditures for civ civilian spending, but that is what it is. But face the nation. Philip and Chip sat across from each other in the Oval Office after a long day of drafting paperwork, or of structure plans, reviewing war plans, preparing for the upcoming election. They were quiet for a moment when Chip broke the silence. Oh, heck, Phil, I can't take any more. We have to talk about the beard. Uh, Philip moved his mouth, but the only thing he mustered was, excuse me? The beard, the goddamn beard. It's not like it looks bad. It's just that people have been talking, you know. That's how they are. Chip threw up his hands and let them fall beside him. They think it's unprofessional. It could hurt us in the midterms. I hardly think that my beard is what the American people are voting. It shouldn't. It shouldn't. You're right. But your average voter isn't voting based on who passed it. What? Trust me when I say they're voting for whichever candidate has the best image. The reason is, reason I, I let the goddamn press take so many photos of me water skiing or the theater was Zaza. Chip sighed as this remembering some painful uh, pay, private sacrifice. Most voters in the country are still trapped in the 1950s and they're not ready to accept a president with a beard. Philip sat gobsmacked and I know he felt so strongly. Oh, we shouldn't have to feel. I really don't. I just don't want us to leave anything to chance when there's so much at stake. Chip looked at him with a pleading expression. It's your face. You do what you want. I just promise you you'll think about it, okay? For the coalition, you really think it's making a difference in November. I appreciate the concern, but I'm not getting rid of my beard. Seriously, it does not look good. I, at least for personally, for me, maybe to you guys it looks great. I don't know. And what was it? The last president that had like facial hair was like President Taft. That was a while ago, even in 1970. So, uh, for one week, yeah, no. If you really think it make a difference, 
He didn't shave yet. The face has changed. <gasps> Philip Hart stood in front of his bathroom mirror with a shaving cream and razor in his hand. God darn absurd, he muttered as he coated his face in cream, having to shave because some uptight reporters. He gilded or glided the razor down his cheek, feeling months of scruff fall away, as if my face matters, if I, as if I came to Washington to be Buddy Holly. It continued. Like this, as Hera filled the saying, and his mood continued to sour after several minutes of quiet grumbling. Hart removed a hand towel from the bathroom wall and scrubbed his skin. With the last of the cream removed, he looked at himself in the mirror. His face looked like strange, very strange without the beard. It seemed to be shriveled, gaunt. He looked old. The next day, Hart tried to move through the west wing as if everything was normal. As if nothing had changed. Still, he could not avoid hearing the snap of the press's cameras. He could not help but see his aides do double takes as he walked by. Jane Jacobs, normally unflappable, had stopped frozen in her tracks as he passed. Even Chap, after pushing so hard, appeared slightly disheartened at the president's new appearance. Oh, God. Well, said Chap, at the meeting, sort of me with a look of forced cheer on his face. Good to finally see you again, Mr. President. I'd almost forgotten what you look like under all that hair. Hart smiled at the quip to disguise its deflating self-esteem. You know, Chip, it's good to be back. Let's get to work. The VP gave. Hart a sad smile and a sympathetic pat on the shoulder. Then, without acknowledging again, they said about their business. Oh. They said about their business. We'll make sacrifices for the country. Oh, God. I think it looks better this way. Reality check. God, it's been a struggle to sit through the policy platform this year. Your eyes glaze over everything in after ten minutes. Age, lad, plumbly. Head of the U.S. Chamber of Commerce mints no words as he sat under the passenger seat of his waiting car, which pulled away from the RDC headquarters with a genteel, genteel growl. His companion, Lee Ayakoka, president of a Ford Motor Company, nodded wearily his face clone. Besides bashing the Germans or Japanese, there's nobody with any pizzazz in either RDC or the MPP this year, Ayakoka said, resting his head on his heart headrest. But neither of us gets to sit this one out. If you ask me, uh, Plumley replied as he lit a cigarette. We'll split our bets between George Romney and George Romney and Phyllis Schlafy at the primaries. At least we can they can write a coherent sentence. And what will they care if they push their books in the recommended executive readings? You're joking, Ayakoka slapped, only for his eyes wide as Plumley didn't join in. You're not joking, Schlafy, really? The one who's been smearing the establishment, including you, me, and everyone else in corporate America, with as wise brush as he can find for years. Uh, you were in that room with me earlier. How often do politicians say one thing in April and change your tune come December? It comes with every election season. Yeah, that's usually because they don't stick to the tune to begin with. Aoka hissed. The woman's, this woman's been saying the same thing for years. She's poisoned Plumley. Romney's the only choice. We'll see. We will see. Ah, uh, mediocre campaign, bro. Wait, reviews and negotiations. Uh. Yeah, I. I, I oh, wow, minus four? Really? Why? They're all going to go to the Democrats? Well, actually. Having more Republicans is okay, because we are actually Democratic, right? Yeah, we're actually Democrats, so getting a plus 16 is pretty decent. Even though we lose four Republicans, these guys lose overall, which is better. So, um, currently, let's keep working on the South. Actually, what are we looking at right here? 19 billion, nice. Very nice. Oh, also, I did delete the entire Navy, that's why. Yeah, at this point, I don't think the Navy has... We have very much to do with the Navy, so that's why I got rid of it. But, the final spike. Or keep, what keeps us together. Rural America wants feels again cut out of the party. Why wouldn't they? Dirt roads are still being traversed by millions of Americans every single day. If we want to change it, oh god, it's going to be expensive. And thus, it would be worth a hefty price tag incurred. Take a rest. San John, New Mexico is a dying town off the Route 40. Keyword was. A year ago, businesses were going to bankrupt every week. Now it's flourishing thanks to the single rest stop that popped up there. The town's GDP has doubled since the rest stop was completed. Which brings the Hart administration to a new bill in the works. It places government-owned rest stops in a highway town. Not only does it bring in government revenue, it shall help, help small towns. A chance to show rural America we haven't forgotten about them. We can save thousands of small towns and simultaneously court the rival, uh, rival vote, too. Flying the wall. Randy glanced over his shoulder to make sure his boss wasn't coming, before leaning back in his cheery side. He's always seemed to get caught in his call center late at night. Oh, well, put him through the College of George Channel East. He reached for one of his donuts before the phone rang. He sighed, picked it up. Good evening, how may I direct your call? Good evening. The voice had a thick, gravelly German accent that roundly almost sounded familiar. 22, 2520 Massachusetts Avenue Northwest. Randy shrugged. Patching you through now, he said, around a mouth full of donut. He sat back again, mind one of the latest Star Trek episode. Kirk and Uhura should be getting soon together, right? In the next season. A voice shook him from his thoughts. He must have forgotten to hang up. I'm bringing the question of transport to my government. We should have a response ready one way or another. The, the accent. Wait, was that Japanese? I'll look forward to hearing it about it. Uh, the German said, I wish you good luck. The line went silent. Randy's mind raged. Germans and Japanese skulking in the shadows of Washington? What were they planning? An evil plot to bring down freedom itself? He had to stop them. He had to. Hey, Randy, shift's down. He got up his replacement, taking a seat. As he walked home through Georgetown, what he'd heard run through his mind. Did he take this to the FBI? Did he take it on alone? It sounded complicated and dangerous, after all. He knew how high up this went. He wanted to do something. He knew after he got the new episode of Star Trek, at least. Good, 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 good. Operation Nighthawk. 
1. A CIA person of intercepted signals indicating that a senior member attaché to the Office of the Fuhrer is a member of several underground homosexual organizations in Berlin. Oh no! Given its assessment of the subject's personality, the prominence of the Tache's family, and the illegality of deviant sexual conduct in Germany, it is highly likely that this information could be used to extract crucial information about German military intelligence and activity. At the President's destruction, uh, agency personnel will move immediately to act on this rare opportunity. 2. The subject of operations. Referred to in this memo as R.A. is the son of a prominent general and graduate of the highly effective uh, Selective Staffs College in Berlin. He is of uh, 34 years of age and described by sources as professionally competent and of moderate intelligence, albeit with a sentiment nature. Rumors of his homosexuality persisted among officers for some time, but was only recently confirmed following an intercepted phone conversation between R.A. and a suspected sexual partner. 3. Field agents subsequently followed R.A. Staff observed him entering a state-approved church known as a gathering place for people of the homosexual lifestyle. The subject left the church with a man and returning with his personal apartment where he was subsequently photographed by field agents in a compromising position. Additional sound recordings were also obtained. Man, I've been in a lot, in quite a few compromising positions. But, for using this gathered information, agents in the wild will make direct contact with R.A. on his way to the aforementioned church. Agents will show R.A. the information obtained indicate that they will release it unless R.A. can provide assets from the Fear's office. Threats against other members of R.A.'s homosexual circle have been authorized. Staff will provide an update to the prison staff once contact has been made. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. What keeps us together? That'd be great. Oh, we're taking a rest? Oh! I don't know how I did this one. But whatever. We'll keep. We'll go through all this. tractor a -thon. Actually, how is agriculture right now? Mm, mass mechanization. It's getting a little better. That would agriculture be nice. Um... Need to consume goods. We go down too, but actually, are we building anything else? We're building more stations here. Uh, let's get another admin office because we can. They want to build it in Ohio. God, not that thing. Not that state. God, no. Oh, wait, more production units. That's nice. Uh, I'll just keep expanding cities. Take a rest. It keeps the country together and whatnot, you know? Cutting some corners. So beside the America will be connected, and that's certainty. However, the prize tag that our ambitious, ambitious and Jedi Cruz is making Dad Hawks wary. The president has two options before him. He can either scrimp and save and make sure rural America is connected, or be with cheap, low quality materials such as gravel. Or, I'll print it hard and spend political capital to guarantee well maintained asphalt roads and make the way to every small town in America. Neither option will make everyone happy, but a decision must be made regardless. Well, what will it be, uh, uh, Mr. President? We're going to go for asphalt. I like asphalt, so. Only plus 16? That's not good. Prediction states that are currently running. Um, here. Sources and methods. Uh, one, after gathering compromising information about the deviant sexual activity of a young senior, of a senior military attaché, uh, agency operatives made contact. Agents provided RA with copies of photos and recordings of his sexual activities. Agents indicated that they would share the information with the German police and superiors in the Führer's office unless it became a source for his U.S. intelligence operations. Though RA has exhibited several emotional distress that calls into question the long-term viability of this operation, the subject has agreed to cooperate. Agents have learned significant information about the inner workings of the Führer's office as well as the existence of several previously undisclosed operations planned by the German military. The, this um, human is highly likely to have aid to aid future U.S. intelligence and counterintelligence operations. Given the value of the information provided by the RA and the unlikeliness of this relationship being sustained long term, agents were authorized to escalate threats to secure physical documents. Agency personnel threatened to reveal RA's sexual partners as well as his personal contacts in the homosexual underground to the German police. Personnel further emphasized the risks that RA's actions posed to RA's family. Although these threats have resulted in one unsuccessful suicide attempt, they have otherwise proven successful in extracting key infor information and sources. Personnel will maintain and, if necessary, escalate threats to ensure that the continued flow of information uh, we assess that this operation can be sustained three months before exposure and urban realities. Uh, new priorities will be instated to ensure major population centers are connected to the interstate highways. As the president's time to connect the cities, Secretary Jacobs has submitted her plans for incorporating the metropolises of America into our highways. Once our centers of trade and commerce are hooked up to the highways, the rest of the country will feel its effects. For once, a domino effect will be panning the out shadow of the wave. Doom hung in the air of the meeting room in New York City Hall. Mayor John Lindsay was still reading the report laid out in front of him, etching every detail of the city's financial disaster into his memory. When he got to the overall city debt section, his eyes watered at the number. All anyone in the room could seem to think was that this had happened on a watch. Had, had happened on their watch. They betrayed us, a city financial official named Sal Lazarotto said. The feds promised us the moon and the star. We listened, and we've ended up with rotten cheese and broken glass. If they think the average New Yorker is going to be willing to pay for this, that's enough, Mayor Lindsay added, cut his subordinate in a short. The blame game is going to get us anywhere with his mess. He rubbed his temples, assessing the fiscal tidal wave headed for a city. 
The combination of municipal bonds going bad, spooked investors pulling investments, and a record increase in spending had given New York City a nightmare of the debt crisis. The revenues, city's revenue high, as it was, was nowhere near enough to cover the shortfall. America's greatest city was on the verge of being able to pay its own bills. Silence prevailed again for the time in the meeting room. The crisis had come on so quickly and so fast that it hardly seemed real, a deadly threat materializing from thin air. We were not betrayed, he said, his eyes meeting the angry, fearful gazes of the others. We just expected too much. The big apple begins to rot, and Japanese acceptance. Ah, yes, it's wonderful, Ambassador. I look forward to talking to you about the next step soon. Kissinger set the phone down. Allowing himself a triumphant smirk, American ships will be allowed to freely travel through the territorial waters of the sphere. He hunched over his desk, writing out a coded message to Hart. It was excellent news. A whole sector of the world economy opened to American transit. Oh, the nationals might complain, but there was no way the American people complained too hard once the economic boost started to kick in. He felt an anxiety he hadn't felt, or really knowledge, before fading. The Japanese generosity was a clear sign that they're as eager for daytime as we are. As he raised a private toast of success, part of the Kissinger found himself wondering what else could, he could ask for. Success breeding com complacency? The treaty would renegotiate a civilian military law. Exposure. 1. Agency personnel have gathered vital information from a senior military attaché within the German government. Um, this information has been extracted using a variety of threats to R.A., a homosexual, and his partner and associates in the German underground. His deteriorating psychological state aside, R.A. is among the most sig significant intelligence sources that the agency secured since the end of World War II. 2. The exposure of several German operations has resulted in increasing suspicion within the upper echelons of the German government of a mole. Intercepted signals suggest that the German spy agency Hauptverwaltung Aufklärung has been engaged in an internal investigation of the Führer's office. At the direction of the Führer's office, the German spy agency Hauptverwaltung Aufklärung conducted an internal investigation. If they have not already identified RA as a source, it's highly likely that they will do so Im imminently. 3. Agency personnel have assessed two options available to EOP. First, agency staff could attempt to extract RA. A successful operation could be useful propaganda for the United States, however. The intelligence value of this operation would be minimal, and any effort would be would present a high risk of U.S. personnel. Agency staff recommend against this operation. Second, agency personnel could sever all contact with RA and focus efforts on covering their own tracks. This operation would promote the safety and security of central or current U.S. personnel, while German sources may attempt to interrogate RA. Devoting U.S. efforts to covering up its activities means that any insights gathered would be minimal. Agency staff recommend this option. Extract the asset, no exit gets left behind. Try to get him. We'll see what happens. Hope it's good. Mm. Oh, yeah. Emergency budget stimulus. Oh, God. URI budget austerity. Unify failing municip municipalities. National Guard Auxiliary for Public Services. Red tape URI budgets. Safeguards will put in Borkasi over averting this crisis was priceless. Good God. 68, 87, 31, ambivalent. I did have to reload the save too, by the way, so. Oh, uh, so lofty 93%, not bad. Immediate for campaign, guys. What are we paying you for? What you doing? Seventeen, yeah, that's that, that's what we like to see. Over here? New England or East Coast? Uh, not classified by the East Coast, but whatever. Livingston president. Huh. We're just cutting some corners with country roads. What was this? Midnight. Oh, gain 20% boost to our public relations? Moonrise. Communication shipping speeds between us and oil and aligning nations by 40%. Dawn. Much more unified. I kind of like that one. Money arms are earning a little bit more money. That is exactly what the OFN needs. Uh, the hard administration will flood the lines with obscene amounts of cash and weapons, and if the Reich and the Sphere scope us out, they'll find a diverse webbing of races and religions, all of them armed to their teeth and itching for an enemy in their crosshairs. The adversaries of democracy and liberty have taken so much from so many. We'll hold on to what we've got for, a few, for the few who are so free. Sure. Country roads. President Hart blinked his eyes in the vain attempt to wipe away the drowsiness from them. He wondered to himself why he was awake at 2 in the morning trying to sort out rural infrastructure of all things. At least Vice President Chep was there to help him. In front of them stood a map produced by the U.S. Department of Agriculture, sketching out the population distribution of America's flyover country. Small town after small town appeared in such volume that they seemed to blur into each other. How is the government supposed to connect it all together? You know what to do? You know what? Do we even need paved roads for connecting them to the highways? What? We, why can't we just make do with gravel roads or even just dirt paths? Chep gave him a skeptical look. Paving all the roads would be quite expensive, continued Hart. Now that sounds funny coming out of your mouth. Ain't you the liberal spender? Hart laughed. But honestly, honestly, I don't think it's something we can cheapen out on. The rope folk ain't ones to be neglected, especially as they already think that you're some big city liberal who doesn't care about them. You need to be in their respect. A lesson I learned when I needed to cut taxes on produce or during my term as governor went over the rope. Hard not to consider Chep's advice, paying all the rural roads. 
Paying them all, connecting the highways would be costing a pretty penny, but just might be what we need to win over this part of America. More commerce. Gravel roads. Can't afford it. Go with the dirt roads. Pretty much. Final spike. What's the point of a milestone? We can't capitalize on it. As more Americans hit the roads thanks to strides made, we too will traverse highways for highly publicized photo opportunity. The road trip will include a multitude of rest stops, meet with meet and greet sessions, and sure to give the Secret Service a scare. At our last stop, we'll deliver a speech to the country, telling them that this is only the beginning. Soon, driving from Boston to Albuquerque or from Tallahassee to Helena will no longer be a thing of the fiction, but something the next generation will take for granted. Life's like a road that you travel on. The spy came in from the cold. It's going to be very costly for us. Oh, one final effort. Well, one, with the approval of leadership, well, agency personnel proceeded with the effort to retrieve an intelligence asset within the upper echelons of the German government. Right here on our referred to as RA. This memorandum serves to briefly outline the reasons for this man's catastrophic failure, which resulted in the capture of the source and a civilian, the exposure of several American trainees and case officers, and the seizure of a safe house. Oh, God. Uh, two, agents made contact with RA after informing RA of his imminent exposure. Agents took him to a car acquired by the agency and told him to drive as quickly as he could to the Swiss border, where he would be assisted by a second set of operatives at a U.S. safe house. And instead of heading directly to the border, it's now believed that RA made a stop at a residence of a sexual partner in a fruitless attempt to rescue them. Three, during the detour to the aforementioned partner's residence, RA was discovered by the Waltung Auklarung officials, the German spy agency. Um, subsequently tracked RA across the country until his arrival at the agency house safe house. There, the HA operatives mobilized to seize RA and present agency personnel. Agency personnel were able to escape through a nearby alley were not able to destroy classified material held at the safe house in time. In addition to this loss, it is believed that RA was interrogated and revealed the details of his handlers and activities over the prior months. German officials have not publicized this information, but already several operatives in the field have been compromised. Casualty is suspected. At the recommendation of the director, information pertaining to Nightwalk has been marked for destruction, and, he, and we lost. Well, that sucks. One final effort. They're supportive, which is good. Uh, we need to be more ambivalent. We need to be more conservative, get more wealth, and civil rights are okay. Construction, huh? Not really changing at all, which sucks. It should change eventually, though. Um, anything up here? Terrorism. Slow down the gross around project? Sure. Uh, when last Dr. Kissinger and Ambassador Takahuchi had dined together, they'd been skulking the depths of the Japanese embassy, but now, with the negotiations to success in the first treaty between the U.S. and the Empire since the Kage Accords on the cusp of being introduced, Kissinger wanted to send a message. So he and Taka Takauchi sat in the San Suchi, the most exclusive restaurant for the American elite. The feeling of the eyes of congressmen who lobbyists on the pair made their victory all the sweeter. It's truly been an honor working with you, Takeuchi said, cutting another piece off his steak, that there are good men of good sense in the United States who see the bigger picture and gives me hope of a better world where our two countries are not enemies in the, as in the future. Maybe Kissinger, I'll watch with newfound glory, was simply reaching out for more. Maybe it was word that the U.S. needed another concession from Tokyo to pass the coming treaty through Congress, or maybe it was simply the wine talking. Whatever his reasons, he leaned towards the ambassador, keeping his low voice low. There was actually one more thing I wanted to put you put to you. Since the end of the war, a great many Americans have been left in Hawaii, as I'm sure you know. Japanese laws left them effectively stranded there, keeping at, kept as second-class citizens, and unable to even visit their loved ones in their home country. This issue is a particular point of resentment for many Americans as regarded the, the empire. I think that its resolution would do much for the detente. Takayuchi leaned back in his chair, lips first. I'm certainly not unsympathetic to the plight of Americans Hawaii, he said after a beat. And you see the rationale, I must warn you, however, elements of my country would not be pleased with such a measure. They would view it as a security risk. My government has already come under extensive criticism for its perceived appeasement. If you push for this, I cannot guarantee you'll be not sink the treaty. You're right, let's proceed to signing. This must be done. Yeah, if this doesn't go well, we'll go back and fix it up, though. Mm. Over and under. Duty to your community. Tractorship. Oh, improve agriculture. The ongoing everlasting fight between the states and the federal governments has gone on since the country's founding and everlasting tug of war. It's a fight that's now extended to the highways. Luckily for the states, the hard administration is more than willing to share some responsibilities of management and upkeep. Give Americans more say on how their highways are run. It was not simply only save the treasury some much needed dollars, but a boy a public support for our highway system. A win win win. Why not? I'll start working on the highway more. Maxed out, maxed out, maxed out. Oh. Steady budget, efficiency. Spending power. Uh, let's do that one. Hey, excellent campaign's good to see. Prediction. Take that on a good campaign. Opera success has good. Go here. 
Um, 70. I already got pretty much everything for 1970 as is here. Here, we're pretty good as well, for the most part, for now. Oh, there. It's like, life's like a road that you travel on. For all his life, Philip prided himself on his cheer and good spirits. He was a man who was willing to make sacrifices who was a good sport to other people. He was a man with a deep reservoir of patience and humility, but as he approached the eighth hour of the sitting in the motorcade, Hart felt himself get near the breaking point. When he got back to Washington, he was going to strangle the staff who suggested the president take, him, take an inaugural ride up and down America's news highways. Are we, are we almost done? The president asked, trying to start to stretch his legs in the limousine while retaining his dignity. Just a little further, uh, dear, said Janie, the first lady, normally a bright, shining beacon, seemed deflated herself. The bright sundress, so immaculate at the start of the day, had been going to crinkle from so much sitting. Uh, we have a visit to, to, to town, I think. Some handshakes and a speech to some highway workers. Christ, a speech. The president smacked the back of his head into the car seat. After hot and being hot and sweating the car for several hours, he cannot imagine a less pleasant activity than having to deliver a rousing, uplifting speech about the virtues of public transportation. Maybe next time we'll launch an initiative. It can be, I don't know, about cruise ships, air travel, perhaps. And then Magina laughed. The president smiled. Perhaps we could muster up a little speech after all. A little laughter makes all the world difference in the world. Actually, before we do that, let's take a look see here. Slow Malta in America must love us. 99% is very good. The job of connecting our new towns and cities won't be finished after the opening ceremonies. The roads and highways will ensure that the lifeblood of our goods and people can continue to flow between our great urban centers and must be adequately maintained after all. It would not do well for government and country to leave the arduous of our nations in a state of disrepair. Maintenance is a thankless task, but our nations to be adequately serviced and connected, it is a necessary one. Oh, we can buy stuff over here. Transportation. Bullet trains. Mr. Amtrak. Yep, so be it. Alright. So, with 100% emergency... Uh, with 100%, I mean, there's no point in increasing that even further. My last day on Earth. It was the end of Eugene McCarthy. As he shuffled towards the Oval Office, he could feel the looks of the White House staffers behind his back, which sung like heck. He and Hart were Midwesterners, he reasoned, that what had McCarthy done? Slowly, he entered the office and saw the President speaking candidly with the Chief of Staff. And I mean, what a fish! Oh, Gene, President Hart called out of the Secretary of Agriculture from across the room, beckoning him to come closer. The jovality caught McCarthy off guard and paranoid applause began materializing in his head. He anxiously took, shook the President's hand and said hello, in awkward silence. Followed. For Secretary McCarthy stood on pride of the floor of the shoe. Well, Mr. President, you call me here. He braced himself. The President squinted his eyes, sensing something from McCarthy, before placing his hand on the Secretary's shoulder. Junior, if you don't want to sit next to Ms. Jacobs, that's all right. Just tell me. The response caught McCarthy off guard. He spluttered back toward a few steps. Well, no, I thought you wanted me out. The Secretary of Agriculture blurted out his confusion and immediately covered his mouth. I'm so sorry, Mr. President. I, I don't know. This was met by a stupefied stare from the President, who quickly erupted into laughter. Gene, no. He let it through the fit. No, that note was about the Friday reception. I thought you'd call me, but when you requested a meeting, of course, I pe penciled you in. Eugene McCarthy was red-faced, but managed to few at last. So, he started, I'm doing fine. A heart hesitated briefly before nodding. You're doing fine. Good. Even. He patted McCarthy's shoulder again. Making such a mistake was a seething humiliation to McCarthy, whose cheeks were flushed red. He sputtered sounds of embarrassment. Sorry, Mr. President, and no, I don't mind sitting next to Jane. He quickly dismissed himself and escaped through the side where confusion and scattered anger really in his mind. Was it all in my head? Happiness. Best weapons. The right stuff. I, mean, I do want this one too, but Little America already trusts us a lot. You know, I want to improve agriculture so much, but whatever. Um, making America. Equality will go up, which is not bad. Slouching towards Gamora. Issue of order. That's some blood. Ooh. Crime is the worst of all everyday disasters that the average American and his or her government at all levels of society are forced to face. It takes many forms. Drug selling, possession, human trafficking, murder, sexual and physical assault, theft. All these are disasters for society and damaging to the societal and economic fabric. Contrary to the lies spouted by the nationalists, we members of the Democratic Party recognize this quite well. There'll be no confusion. The Democrats are and always have been tough on crime. Those concerned for the public welfare might provide the assorted hardliners and access lovers in society with an excuse to think differently. Our president has never been an exception to this trend. The president will work with the U.S. Congress to draft a crime bill that can see a salutable plummet of criminal activity in the cities. Combined with proper enforcement, the most important focus of this bill will be less on preventing criminals from thriving than it will be on protecting innocent and law-abiding citizens of the United States of America. An image problem, or minor detour. Oh, yes, I understand. Mr. Takayuchi, thank you. I'll be in contact to discuss moving forward. Kissinger set the phone down, leaning back in his chair. 
The Japanese refused the easing of transit with restrictions from Hawaii. At this very least, they still wanted to push for the original deal, and Kissinger saw now reason to deny them. Besides, looked up at his hotel room ceiling. The deal could have been so much more, but there's nothing forward. He put Hawaii behind him and started planning out for the treaty. It was worth a shot. An image problem. It was rare to have the president take a luncheon, with a democratic caucus. Despite Hart's efforts to keep abreast of the going on in the hill, Humphrey knew the rigors of the Oval Office were slowly driving the man from his old stomping ground. Uh, still, Humphrey savored the occasion. Some Congress critters, uh, after all, needed the occasion to remind that they had their man in the White House. It's an honor to have you here, Mr. President, Humphrey began. No, 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 the honor's all mine, Hubert, uh, Hart smiled, though I can't say this is purely social function. Oh, heck, Mr. President, joke, Sophie Williams, Hart's old patron back when he was a lieutenant governor. It'll live a little. And make the public think we're even more of a bunch of softies, the President grinned. If I didn't know any better, I'd say that we're, we are the fools who lost the darn war, added another congressman. Hart chuckled. They wouldn't go that far, but I think my staff would call it an image problem. An issue of toughness, the pollsters tell me. Um... It always helped by cracking some heads. Well, Humphrey brought himself back into the fray, smiling. Not quite. We're not going to put the president here on a Chicago foot patrol. Chuckles reverberated throughout the room, but I think we're all tired of being called weak on crime. A crime bill won't have the same impact as Phil holding a nightstick, Sophie grinned, but it'll have to do. That's all protect America. Please direct your attention to the decisions tab, where we'll be assembling the crime bill. We're still at 93%, which is really freaking good. So, uh, I, there's no point in even doing any of this stuff. Since we're really good, anyways. Hopefully, this is going to get better. Um, interstate. Yeah, hold on, we'll see. That's not good. That's not terrible. Supportive. 68% of those guys, too. Ah! Oh, God. What is this? It's insultingly weak. To address crime, addressing funding, excess order, support zero seats, increase jail time for planters. Peter Harsher. Fines for property. Progress will be less supportive. Well, how many do we have for the, these guys? 19. Hmm. Three, drug rehabilitation. Local. Softer. Limit use of police force of riots. Well. Snap inspection under reasonable suspicion. We'll go with that one first. Total seats and support. Warrantless searches. To address funding. Drug rehabilitation. I like that idea. Let's rehabilitate them. Eleven seats, that's not good. God dang it. Um I need more Republicans and Democrats. Minimum fines, increased presence. Blacklist campaign, mediocre campaign. 26 seats is good. We'll take whatever we can get, basically. Uh, let's come up here. Harsher. Bill's currently middling. 38 seats. Uh, we have to solve plenty we can do here. More police departments. Less forceful policing tactics. 38, 45 is good. We are currently orderly. I actually really like this. This is really cool. A very awesome way to do all this stuff. Because you don't always get stuff to do like this. So. Well, social spending went down a little bit. 24 billion, that's not bad. 190, 20 billion, that's good. Cool. Um, let's see, three seats for the progressives, mandatory jail time for possession, increased presence, police at riots. We get less nationalists and less Democrats. Uh, 60 seats, vote on the bill, slashing towards Gomorrah. Minimum fines for property damage? It's fine. 60 seats. 69 seats. Incredibly harsh. Vote on the bill. It's less being towards Gamora. Crime is worse of all the everyday disasters that the average American and his or government or all of society are forced to face. Of course. I read this one earlier too, so. That's actually extremely. I like this one. This, uh, focus like this it makes it very, very cool. I like that a lot. Listen, bud. Our crime prevention programs begins 
of 7% in handling crime effectiveness. Youth employment opportunities. Oh yeah, that seems pretty good. Let's not kid ourselves, the youth are the lifeblood of this nation and its future. To pretend otherwise would be denial of not just our future, but our inevitable morality as well. We're getting this country out of a major, out of a jam or contemporaries put us in, but we can't do it alone. When your car gets stuck inside a rut, you don't get it out by simply flooring the gas, but I'm hoping for the best. Well, I guess, I guess we're not supposed to do that. No, you get your passengers out. They push with all their might while you drive it out of the hole. That's why the country needs all the hands on deck to get its economy back on its feet. Employment, of course, skills, or courses, training, skill training, and interning opportunities are just some of the future. Uh, uh, some of the things we can offer the kids uh, to prepare them for the future that we're creating. Not only does this keep them straying from the path of gang activity and homelessness, but also make sure that our heirs will do even better with the job than having the preparing their kids as well. Yep, if we have to do it, we have to do it. Really cool. More political power? Sure. You have more than enough political power in this campaign. Some, in previous campaigns before Unfinished Business came out, it was much harder to get. But listen, bud. When a lazy teenage boy is given the honor, onerous task of making up, or making up, <clears throat> taking out the weeds in the garden, he'll not ask for the weed pulled and get rid of the root and stem. Instead, he'll run around with a shovel or some such and knock the heads and stems off the plant, leaving the roots completely untouched, and allow them to grow back in the forest several days later, which is defeating the entire purpose. That's a perfect metaphor for the current strategy of the drug enforcement in too many cities. The average policeman uses draconian punishments on the people possessing drugs without asking. Uh, one's word worth of questions about who gave them the drugs. Fortunately, we have a way of uprooting the problem rather than just nipping it in the bud. Direct security attention away from the folks possessing drugs and instead tackle the people giving them drugs, as in the planners and dealers. These scum are the source of the crime possession. Cutting them off from business would necessarily mean a decline um, uh, in possession the charges. The Law Enforcement Act passes the Senate. After a lengthy period of drafting committee review, the Law Enforcement Act has finally passed the Senate. Though many senators have concerns and input given its importance, with the bill's passage endowed to many points, the RDC senators united to push it through. With the bill passed, law enforcement should begin receiving better funding, training and equipment, enabling them to cut down on crime. President Harkin rejoiced that cities across America continue to improve. This crime is particularly the urban blight, da able to damage entire communities deeply, and with the new resources available, should continue to dwindle. The war on crime continues. The police department will be, will be unlocked on the street corner. Oh, that's cool. Uh, happiness of citizens in the average city increased by 3%. The crime combating programs will lose effectiveness in handling crime. Um, uh, crime prevention will gain effectiveness by 4% to spend a little money. The public is shocked that the bill went so far. Urban voters are trying to support Democrats over the span of 12 weeks with an immediate change in partisanship and will trend more liberal on the issues of domestic policy over the span of four weeks, which is uh, interesting. Uh, well, social welfare plans are work in progress. The administration is selling no crisis. We made a little effort toward transportation. It is what it is. And we're still doing that too. Uh, 37, 31, they're 100% here, 68. So what is the street corner thing? Generic lamppost. Generic apartments, generic depot, or less poverty rate monthly, homelessness goes down, police station, equality rate goes down, monthly crime, uh, well, let's take a look-see, efficiency goes up a little bit more, everything else gets worse though, which is not good, and we did just did that one too, listen, bud is next, of course, which is good, operational success, very nice. Um... Red tape URI budgets. The safeguards implemented were costly, however, over this crisis was priceless. Uh, the big album's gratitude, Madam Secretary, the Mayor of New York is on the line. Jane Jacobs, Secretary, Secretary, picked up the phone, having expected this call at some point today. Good, uh, Mr. Mayor, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Secretary Jacobs. John Lindsay's jovial mood was immediately clear. I want to thank you personally for the federal aid your department has dispersed. The New York financial crisis has gone from a tidal wave to a ripple, and the city is nearly completely unscathed. Well, I'm happy to hear the federal aid was assistance, Mr. Lindsay, Jacobs replied. The cost of the program is enormous given the number of exposed cities. The taxpayers will be handling the hefty bill, and it limits our budget for other priorities. Madam Secretary, Lindsay replied, his uh, voice suddenly serious. I agree the cost was high, but you must agree that any price was worth paying to avoid what you and I both know was coming. New York. Would have been on life support, the regional, heck. Even national economy could have been taking nasty tumbles. The crime, poverty, education cuts, it would be a nightmare. You and the feds did the right thing here, and I, along with every New Yorker, thank you. Somewhat touched, Secretary Jacobs. Thank the mayor for all his call and hung up the phone, turning back to the other matters at hand. This particular fire been put out, but there's certainly plenty of others smoldering. The work has never finished, of course. All of God's children. Cost goes up. Oh, responsible Republicans are more liberal. While we are doing the right thing, this policy is incredibly abstract and will undoubtedly be used against us. Review sentencing. Admin efficiency goes up. Oh, God. All God's children lampposts. Midnight basketball. In action. Cultivating community. Future is you. 
clocking in. Cultivating community. Many places are uh, for ancestors called home. Europe, Africa, Asia, the power was often known in the hands of a lot of di different grandees far away from where many of the ordinary people lived. If there was a disaster or a famine or problems with lawbreakers, the people would often have to break their necks and backs going to the gates of the palace for help, only to be thrown out. Even if they were not sent away, their pleas could be often and often were. Ignored by preoccupied politicians, overextended bureaucrats or put up rulers, or put upon rulers. When this was not due to ill will, such an inaction was often because of a simple inability to do anything about the problem. But many of the Native American communities, just like the most successful local communities in the Old World, knew better than to rely on faraway powers for all but the most intractable issues. And instead, they took refuge in one another and relied on the tools and people they had in the close locality, maybe no more than a five or ten minute mile radius, to see their problem solved. They built connections of friendship and family with one another, and the good used, grew used to one another, thus developing a synergy that governments and supranational bodies often sorely lacked. Also reflected the reality that the most responsive of all governing bodies is a community, especially a local one. Another reality we need to reflect on is that there isn't a, aren't enough of such things in the United States. We need something about this, and quickly, by enabling the building of a strong local communities, we cut the burden of the government. At the same time, crime will recede and business will boom. Well, hopefully. Japanese American Pacific Treaty, Transit Treaty. After countless hours of negotiation, both the Japanese are within the and within the Hart administration. The first phase of the Japanese American Daytime students have come to an end. The treaty has been drafted, to cover topics as diverse as fishing rights, zones of transit, and the recognition of Japan's imperial conquest. If signed, it will mark a turning point with Japanese American relations, but it's also sure to inspire backlash from those who still have not forgotten the war in the Pacific. Choice is always yours, Mr. President. We're backing out. Well, we're going to send it in. Rebuilding the bank. Poverty. Getting rid of poverty would be nice. The best weapon. Cost. Uh, cost is going to be really bad for us. Elephant in the room. Uh, left room ring. Come home to America. Happiness will go up, which is nice. Lessons for life. That'd be good, too. Ah. Listen, bud. Oh, that's the one. Real quick first. 17. Only minus one Republican? Even better. Mm. Nice. Mm, not bad. Cool. Alright. So, it's still September. And what else do we want? Left room ring. And for the boys. In and out, the poverty rate. That seems like a good thing to do. Uh, where are we at for this? This is fine. Still 100%, which is fine. Little America is still very supportive of us, which is nice. Call the wild. Um. Monroe's mission, over and under. Uh, crime will lose effectiveness. Crime will decrease tremendously. Local police departments, as much as we can. In and out. Free trade is not always fair trade. Far too often, the liberalization of international trade has been used to undermine the rights of unions and workers with one-sided agreements. American manufacturers are undercut by a flood of cheap products at home and are unable to compete abroad thanks to tariffs and preferential trade policies. President Hart is no protectionist. Fair trade helps support our allies, reduce the cost of goods. And supports broader economic prosperity at home. Yet we cannot stand idly by and watch the prosperity of the working man is undermined through unfair government. The Hart administration will ensure America's trade agreements are fair as well as free. The transit a treaty goes to the Senate. And surprising news on the diplomatic front, news developments, new developments in the relations between the United States and Japan as a talk of the country over the past few months. A treaty clarified trade and transit issues with the Empire of Japan is negotiated, primarily according to the White House, between Ambassador Ryuji Takayuchi and National Security Advisor Henry Kissinger. Although the executive branch has signed the treaty, it must not go to the Senate for ratification. As can be expected, um, for a treaty with one of America's greatest enemies, that's become a controversial issue. Progressive Senator Henry M. Jackson, the, for instance, has been a fierce critic, blasting what considers to be the first step on the road to their detente with a country with the blood of American boys on its hand. Boys in support of the administration, such as Senator or Senate Majority Leader Hubert Humphrey, argue that the treaty will bring economic prosperity to the United States and cool tensions in the Pacific. Despite the objections of some extreme hawks, the treaty on the whole has proven to be incredibly popular with the American people. According to our polls, its provisions are recognized as clearly benefiting the United States, and the Americans seem receptive to the President's proclamations. They all start to right the wrongs of the Pacific War. With his party united behind him, the President can look forward to a likely triumph in the Senate. I'm Walter Cronkite, and that's the way it is. I think I read that right. I could be wrong. Oh well. In and out. First checkpoint. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I want to do a lot of this stuff here, too. Where are we at? 117.29 billion in debt. Now it's 115. That's pretty good. Uh, can we suppress our political rivals? No? Darn. Smoke and mirrors, initiatives, 
hundred percent sixty-eight ambivalent. They're weary. Conservatives are. Oh, we barely the Pacific Maritime Rights Treaty. We barely got them. Fifty versus forty-eight. That is extremely tight. Whoa. Whoa, that's tight. Jesus. Path forward. And during chug. It's true that men and women, often immigrants, walking in on the bare feet, conquered the untamed wilderness of what now the West or the United States. But ardor and gold they mined were not enough to build permanent prosperity in these lands. It was the construction of great rail lines from coast to coast that made places like California, Utah, the powerhouses they are today. It's proven by the critical observation that was made as, well, as the rail lines developed and were improved. That whereas the wealth was created in a given settlement after settlement, true prosperity was only present once the rail connections and infrastructure was established. This is true for San Jose, Salt Lake City, or for Spokane, or for Selma, indeed, for virtually all of the great western towns and cities, without exception. A, a public rail initiative will enable us to build on the foundation of old rail builders left behind, and just as crucially would strengthen businesses, no matter its location, introduce a truly convenient mode of transport for the average citizen. Even if civilians do not line up to take a ride, commerce will still benefit nonetheless. After all, a train ride is quicker than a tractor trailer. I apologize for quicking, quickly reading through all these stuff. In this episode, but it's kind of what we have to do. But secrets revealed. It's been a tough fight. Favors were promised, arms twisted, alliances negotiated, but at the end of it all, the treaty passed in. President Hart sat back in his chair, saving the victory, or at least he would have been had his Secretary of State not burst into his office. With all due respect, Mr. President Harry Truman said in a voice that was surprising the level given the circumstances, why did I find out about a major treaty with one of our worst enemies with American blood on its hands when it was announced to the Senate? The State Department conducts diplomacy and we weren't even given the courtesy of an advance warning. Uh, Hartman Truman's eyes. I'm sorry we kept this from you, Harry, he said, but I'm proud of what we've done. Whatever else the Japanese might be, they're content with what, 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 what they have. We can't be wasting resources fighting them in Bush Wars while the Germans continue to expand. I stand by the treaty. Truman sighed. I understand the reasoning. Whatever else might be, Dr. Kissinger is no fool, but Mr. President, I urge you not to conduct secret negotiations like, negotiations like this. It would be controversial even as, as a success. If what you were doing had gone out during negotiations, a scandal could have sunk us, and that's not even getting into the effect uh, such secret keeping has on the health of our democracy. That's something Nixon would have done. Hard not a stroke in his chin. You make a fair point, he said. I certainly don't want to be hiding things from the public. I'll talk things through with Henry. A second necessary sacrifice? Continue to pursue detente in Japan, more growth, and less tension. Not bad. Not bad overall. Still a plus 17. It's not bad. Let's come up here. We probably won't get them both. That's fine. Um, yeah. Hmm. Spy range goes up. That's cool. what we want. 28.6, huh? Hey, it's getting better. 29%. Not bad. The enduring chug over and under. Robert Moses is what one of urban planners in New York City, nevertheless. He represents a nightmarish vision for his country, where minorities in the poor are blocked off from public amenities and the communities are bulldozed and make way for highways. The art administration is going to take a gentle touch, but working closely with the communities and urban planners, our administration will find a way to meet with the needs of the motorists and the community at the same time. Which would be a good thing. Of course. Over and under. Offers dispatch from Cairo. Cairo, Egypt, regimes in the Middle East these days look like an old rotten tree. We need a wobbling, but it's hard to predict whether they'll fall. Here in Egypt, the situation is no different. Inspired by the uprising neighboring countries, citizens in Cairo this week took to the streets to protest a government that they claim is more beholden to Italian threats or interests than their own. The unrest. A loud phlegm filled cough for Mark Dan of Chicago Tribune. Oh, I think it was this before. I was definitely before. I'll give you 10 bucks. That's fine. If you want to continue reading this, please go ahead. But uh, that's, that's not fun to do. Well, it's not bad, but it's just like frustrating sometimes doing all that stuff. I apologize for not reading all that, but you know, I've read that like 16,000 times. Over and under is what I want to really do. It's called the wild. Hello, America. Truly gain trust. Happiness will increase. Roll call. With the construction finalized or approaching completion on most of our planned highways, there is talk of further renovations to better connect desperate communities across the country. Our representatives in Congress are already taking the first steps to negotiate a new highway bill that will fund further road construction. However, with funding draw drying up, we must take steps to ensure that these new additions do not fall too far out of the budget range. Let's less fiscal concerns deal with the administration and unnecessary setback. Introduction of the Act The Interstate Highway Act Expansion, or Interstate Highway Expansion Act, has come before. Both houses of Congress, the Act aims to open up new highway construction projects across the country, further connecting the different states of the Union. The highways will ease transport between the states for the uniting our country and growing our economy. Let's hope it passes. Same. We've got to build new interstates, too. Um, supporting... Hey, 69. Nice. 
Monroe's mission. Hart goes on a road trip. Across the highways in a motorcade, pretty pretty long, and he's a bit tired of the end of it, so he has to give a speech to the highway workers at the end of it, so he's just so silly uncomfortable after such a long ride. Stop that. Funding for the interstate will decrease. Urban wealth will decrease their disdain. Gain faith, efficiency, increase budget. Finally, we have lots. We saw we didn't have any sooner. Equality goes down. Efficiency will increase. Honestly, efficiency is already pretty good. Stop that. We're going to stop that. Just because, uh, like, I don't want everyone else to be pissed off because this is too high. They're Now they're calm, which is good. So in elections, everything is literally falling apart now. Heart monitor. Ah. Here we go. Increase by five, send advisors. All right. God dang it, we have to get involved now, which is gonna take forever to do with all this stuff. Which part of Oman do we like? Well, there's this one. We can send three divisions, which isn't bad. We'll send Maxwell Taylor. And then over here, Because we don't like anybody. Okay, that's fine with me. Twenty-nine point eight is not. Yeah, it went up to thirty-two, thirty point two. Nice. Very good. And another country's gonna pop up. Oh shh, Nikes. And here we go. Oh, good lord. Sudan Defense Force. We'll do the best we can, but Jesus Christ. It's fine. Just don't crush the game, god dang it. And now we can send three divisions as well. All right. The Iraqi Republic. God dang it. So, do you have an airbase we can send stuff to, maybe? Yes. No. Maybe so. Well... Let's at least get these guys close to here ish. Uh, we still didn't get Italy in the OFM, which kind of sucks. Here. So that's where you guys went, huh? Oh, crap. Well, that's not good. This showed up here though. God, I hate doing this sometimes, man. You just go in there and get the crap out of them. And the machine falters. If you're wondering about this, please go right ahead. Oh crap, I should not click on that. Uh Okay, so we did finish roll call first, that's good. Um Actually, this is the first time I'm doing this. What do you mean? Things. We should be locked out of doing stuff, right? Sudan. More resources we send our supportive actions, the more we gain once conflict ends, which is fine. Um, so, construction would be good. Smoke and mirrors, home front. 37, 25.5, that's good, 100%. 75% is not bad either. Ah, energy, okay, so this is where the energy crisis stuff happens. Funding for the interstate goes down. Oh, commission nuclear power plants, I like that a lot. Inflation goes up, which is not good. For 100 days, we'll build nuclear reactors at incredible speed. Lower speed limits. Construct monorails in URI towns, public inflation will increase. Oh, God. 
Drop training for oil workers. Spend money. Efficiency goes down, but it probably gets better. Um, we'll do that one for now. I kind of like how different it is when we're doing it like this. That's different, and I like it. Call of the Wild. Little America gets more happiness. I do want to just rush through this stuff here, so Call of the Wild. From the Grand Canyon carved by Colorado, the waterly bellows of the Yellowstone's Cal calderos and the thundering roar of the Niagara Falls. America is blessed by divine natural beauty. Yes, it is a sad truth that the nation 3,000 miles in length, that much beauty is in inaccessible to all but the most determined naturalists and park goers. Thankfully, our remedy can be found within the best uh, minds of the departments of interior and transportation. A plan to both improve the accessibility of America's natural beauty and bring roads to some of the country's most remote regions. While expanding your natural parks closer to our highways and through improvements in accessibility, I hope that our roads can spur increased interest in great national parks and bring in added revenue for the uh, park service. Of course, service must be taken to preserve the uh, safety of local wildlife, less natural excursion of many of an American are to be ruined by some unfortunate roadkill. The Adventure Road. After years of effort, we can finally say what we've done, uh, what we've done to it. As construction work concludes in the last of the delayed interstates, the United States is linked from sea to the shining sea by the interstate. From California to the New York Islands, our citizens can now cross the continent, luxuriate in the freedom offered by such an automobile, and explore the natural beauty of this great nation. Some may criticize the methods of construction and take issue with location and cost, but few can deny the achievement. Prison art has shown in America that the administration can deliver not just on pole poles and rhetoric, but also on street lights and highways, too. Through the drive through Dallas. Nice. First checkpoint. Um, I definitely want to do, like, crime next and stuff. Rules and regulations. Second checkpoint. Um, city goers stop and honest plea our burden catapults cost goes down which would be nice cost goes down which would be nice we always spend is green oh that'd be nice and for the boys we could do that too or we can do that with this bricks and windows an officer duty has to protect and serve a lot of our departments incur uh, across America seem to have forgotten that. It's high time to audit law enforcement. Re reward departments that are doing the right things and flag down the ones who are abusing the power. From the freshest beat cop just learning his patrol route to the chief of police mostly in metropolises, we'll put a new face in a law and order. One that doesn't create an image of distrust and lack. A lackluster effectiveness. Nice. Oh, expand. It passes the Senate. Look at that. The votes have been tallied and the results are clear. The Interstate Highway Expansion Act has been passed. Applause filled the Senate chamber as the vote show America's poised to become a more connected nation than ever. The bill will now go to the President Hart's desk, where he's expected to sign it from companies able to ship their warriors to even more places than ordinary citizens who want to see the natural beauty of the country. Today is a great day for all Americans. Another triumph for the White House. Yes, it is. Can we get through here and here and you just encircle them all and kill them all off that way? Which would be great. On empires, walking down the ruined streets of Damascus was surreal. Uh, ancient houses were blown with shell holes. The walls of churches had once been observed worshippers. When server worshippers from the extinct denominations were visited by bullet wounds, of course. All this is one in one less war torn country in the Middle East. Thomas War could scarcely hide his awe. The local translator assigned to him, the deeply cynical man in Ward's eyes, must have noticed. Pressure to fill the silence with something, Thomas was one on one of his impromptu speeches. His plan to write about this visit, after all, better hurts. Though he's going to send to the New York Times. Now we see as a result of a minor skirmish in <clears throat> the grand scheme of things, right? A minor skirmish compared to what's happening in Baghdad, Cairo, heck, Aiden, and even it's horrific. There's no explanation. The man beside him uh, hardly stirred when he, which he took his assignment to keep it document to himself. Some say that Syria has been spared the worst of the crisis. I can't say that in good conscience, as I believe that amidst the results of a stand small standoff between government forces and a single arm resistance group, you know, perhaps the country was spared for a reason. The Turks were notorious for the violations of human rights in the region, going so far back as the old Ottoman Empire and the new Italian Empire, some made them look kind. Many may have forgotten the Italo Turkish War, the second Italo Turkish War, that's a distinction most people don't even bother to make, but I was here. This age of empire has gone in an incomprehensible effect on the people of the country. The translator cut him off, and that's not going to be over anytime soon. While the Germans are in shambles, hardly able to look away from Europe, the Japanese regime is cracking under the wave of its own bloated leadership. There's no such empire. I'm not here to accompany an agent of the German or the Japanese, am I? It's the same power that funded the resistance groups that th did this. The man gestured at a nearby pool of blood. They spent the rest of the walk in silence, of course. But, oh god, this is not looking good. Um, I'm going to do more of this off screen and just kind of blow through this as best we can because sometimes this is it's a bit much to do. But I think I'm going to end the episode there. I think we're doing really well. You know, it's, it's very slow, but I mean, it, there's so much going on, which is, makes sense, especially near this part of the campaign but if you enjoyed the video please please do consider leaving a like it helps me out a whole lot uh, subscribe if you're new of course as well check out my discord link in the description below and i'll see you tomorrow as we'll have a great time with the election what we did really well with the election and with the middle east thanks for watching have a great rest of your day